now we march on to the next month with some great features this month. Shh. One of them I've kept secret for a little bit. We should definitely start with that one. So please welcome the Red Savage. <laughs> Started the singing songwriting gig in a serious way back in 2017. He says, my music is inspired by my own life, things around me, and sometimes a quest for soul with my music. I believe the best mu musicians are the ones who can tap into their soul on a deep level that affects those who listen. In many songs, I tell a story. Sometimes they are silly in the case of Howling at the Neighbors and sad in the case of Clara, my late best friend and wife. I love entertaining and bringing smiles to the faces of people. I am primarily a vocalist, though trained as a guitar and bass. I try to put as much of my heart and soul into whatever it is that I get inspired to write. Some songs are angry, some are sad, and some are funny. As a mood-driven artist, I like to have something to offer all listeners who wander into the arena of rock, punk, and psychedelia. Enjoy. With an old school rock and roll sound mixed with some modern tones, you can't deny that he has a unique sound. The Red Savage can be found on Spotify. Check out his music at the links below. Soldiering on to the next, we discover that there are authors writing new and different types of works still out there today. Marco Mazzi was born in Verona, Italy. He graduated in mass communications at the University of Padau and in Viola at the Conservatory of Music of Verona. He has lived in Italy, Spain, Palestine, and South Africa. Besides his main job as musician and teacher, which has brought him around the world, he has written articles for newspapers and websites in English, Spanish, and Italian. Currently, Marco lives in South Africa with his family. Chronicles of Albion is his first published book in the format of an ebook. Now I have a little sample of this ebook for you. The prologue starts. The day was sunny. Lucius had gone for a walk at dawn, as was his custom. He was wearing the winter tunic, and now that the sun was higher above the horizon, he was sweating already. It was going to be an unusually hot for being at the end of November, but Lucius wasn't feeling uncomfortable at all. He liked warm weather. Every day, early in the morning, he would go out and meditate. How wonderful is creation, he would often think, sitting on a rock while he was admiring the sunrise or watching the flight of a kite. It was time to walk back to the vivarium. The daily tasks were waiting. He had to go back to work, copying fragments of De Hortus of Gargolius Martilius, from the point where he had stopped the evening before. On the way back, Lucius asked himself, which were the criteria that decided that a text was to be assigned to a copyist rather than to another? He had been living in the monastery for two years, and only in the last few months he had been given the role of copyist. He recalled it very well, Five months earlier, he had been summoned by the abbot, who had told him 
that he was pleased with his work until that moment, and so the novice Lucius was now ready for the delicate task of copying old texts to be added to the library at the Vivarium. That is the only sample you will get from me on Chronicles of Albion, which is a historical fiction travel set in a lost society during a mysterious age. We know almost nothing of what happened there and then, and this travel allows the reader to imagine himself wandering in those places among those people. It was a fascinating period of the Dark Ages where the heroes who will be part of future le legends, such as the Matter of Britannia, were just people in the flesh, fighting for power, for love, for faith, for survival. They were the protagonists of the Chronicles of Albion. Not a lot of reviews out there on this one yet, so I'm sure that it will help the author out if you leave a review. Although I'm also sure he'd appreciate the purchase as well. So get the book at the link down below. Stepping into our last section, but should certainly not be considered our least, is Yohami Navarez. She states, I build paper models that allow me to use space and composition based on the language of theater. They are then interpreted in painting. The quietness of the picture space collapses a viewer's attention from the wall on one which the image hangs and deeply nourishes the spatial mind. Socially, she states, I have always lived as an immigrant, and through art, I claim the place within me that I lost. The paintings have come to reference photographs from different places I have lived. In my last work on American houses, I started my making photographs that depicts homes in my neighborhood, especially at night. Those photos then become place of experimentation, places outside the imaginary and inside the reality. I paint from the theater box model, light and space in the theater box, and the light rendered on the painting allows me to initially capture these phenomena. A characteristic that unites every translation of the image, both in theater and in the paintings, is the awareness of con conceiving myself as a viewpoint that speaks with the landscape. A viewpoint, like the viewer, braves all sorts of the landscape's weather, from sunrise to unfamiliar storms. My work is committed to solving alienation in a society that has lost its primary skill uh, to experience natural, realistic space. The landscape is a condition to begin this awareness. If you like the works, please consider going to the website below and make a purchase or support her in any way that you feel. Well, those are the creators for March and they really are some unique works. As always, please support the creators, but more than that, also support The Fable by liking and sharing the videos. This helps The Fable grow, which means that there is a better chance that these creators will find their audience. That's all for this week, and don't forget to be your own Fable.